This is Dr. Charles Parker, and you're listening to Core Brain Journal. It's a place where I connect both fresh discoveries and interesting different perspectives from advanced mind science with the realities of real people and everyday life down on Main Street. Well, welcome aboard, folks. Dr. Charles Parker here at Core Brain Journal, hosting a variety of interesting people who are really making an effort to change the way we do things in mental health land, in brain care, in biomedical measurements and, and recovery. And, and these folks we have today, welcome Stephen Lewis and Janet Lewis. Dr. Stephen Lewis is a chiropractic physician, and Janet's joining us. Thanks so much for coming on board, guys. These are measurement folks. <laughs> it's good to be here. So we'll talk more about what they do because they are right in line with what we've been talking about at Core Brain Journal for some time. What we've been practicing at Core Psych for a long period of time is to really, how do you actually transfer and change this game of labels into, into the reality of hard data? What are the measurement tools? And we're going to be talking about that today. So we'll get right into it in just a second. Right now, we're going to say a couple of words from our sponsors. And first of all, you listeners already know how much we love the reality. We were just talking about it, the reality of data here at CBJ. And today we welcome our clinical friend and partner, partner, Direct Health Access Laboratory, right outside of Chicago, Illinois. With over 3 million studies, they're deep leaders of experience with the big picture of measuring, for example, methylation, cryptopyrrole, and copper challenges. They have a global service with a molecular focus. Remember this, folks, if they can serve professionals in Nigeria, they can certainly help you out in Fargo. Stay tuned and take a look at dhalab.com forward slash core for more information. And then you also know that we're not only interested in the measurement, we're also interested in the detailed improvements of the actual delivery of care. And today we're pleased to also welcome, with a deep interest in fresh options, to address the complexity of adolescent treatment failure nationally and internationally. For 80 years, the nonprofit Barry Robinson Center teams in Norfolk, Virginia, provide residential care on an evolved family, personal, and global service. They are actually TRICARE friendly, and we're going to talk more about them in a minute. Just go to barryrobinson.org. That's B-A-R-R-Y, robinson.org, forward slash core for more information. So with that, I'm going to do a little introduction here on Dr. Stephen Lewis and Janet. And what we're going to do is talk about the fact that they both have a long history of helping people achieve their maximum potential. Dr. Stephen Lewis stays current on the latest research pertaining to nutritional supplements and optimum, optimum health. I don't know why I'm having trouble talking all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, so Janet Lewis is a close partner, obviously, certified natural health consultant with a unique perspective on alternative and complementary nutrition from studying with numerous national leading alternative health experts. Paramount in their education was, get this folks, their trip to China while studying with traditional Chinese medical doctors. Dr. Stephen Lewis and Janet know the importance of proper nutrition in the healing process and the maintenance of the human body and its relevance to mind care. They incorporate the latest medical research into their decisions, and they really do, uh, they're strong on measurement. We're going to be talking about measurement in just a moment. After seeing a growing public need, they formed a, an organization called Pro Health IQ, which they've recently evolved into Green Wisdom Health, which is their fresh new name. You heard it first here. And we're going to have that Green Wisdom Health in the show notes. And it's to offer extremely low cost blood work to determine the most appropriate nutritional products that are only available through a doctor's office. Now, that, friends, as you know, is music to my ears. Anytime somebody talking about low-cost blood work, and we've interviewed a number of individuals here because we love the laboratories. We think they're doing a tremendous service. So with that, let's go in and talk about this evolution that you folks have had 
as a treatment team. You're really a treatment team. You're a measurement and analysis team, but you're also a treatment team. How did that all take place in the first place? What was the roadblock? What was the impediment that said, hey, we've got to do something different here? Well, I was a very successful chiropractor, and I always did much more nutrition than the average chiropractor because I think nerve supply is great, but nutrition is paramount. Um, then Janet uh, got very, very successful in her own right, and I thought, wow, I like what she's doing. And, you know, the way insurance has gone, it's like, well, I think I can move away from the chiropractic part. There's plenty of good chiropractors around it, but there's not en enough people that practice good science-based nutrition. And it just kind of grew and grew and grew. And sometimes we wonder how we can keep up with it all because people are just clamoring for the truth mm -hmm. and clamoring to get rid of their anxiety or their brain fog and their depression, their uh, tired of living a, a life unfulfilled or, or a life full of quiet desperation. And sometimes they don't verbalize that, but you can see it in their eyes and see it in their posture. And it's like, well, if we can add one or two little things to their nutritional value to, to check their uh, endocrine system, you know, to help with methylation, to detox more quickly, et cetera, et cetera, then you've not just changed that person's life for a day, but you changed it for a lifetime. And then everybody they touch, you know, that gets better. I mean, that's so true. It is, really is true. So you were, uh, were you doing a lot of measuring and testing as soon as you entered your practice or did it evolve? Uh, you, you were starting to do, uh, I'm, I'm assuming being chiropractic, you were doing manipulation and so on. Right. And then you became more and more scientific. It looks like you got down into more and more data. How did all that take place? It was through my personal health experiences. <laughs> oh. Uh, we, we basically knew about nutrition. Um, you talked about going to China to study with the Chinese medical doctors. During that time, I was doing uh, something called iridology um, and was very good at it to the point that uh, a big corporation took us to China to study. Hold on just a second. Yes. That's a great name. I know what it is, but I, I think about 90% of our audience may, know, may not know what iridology is. Let's talk about that quickly. Uh, iridology is a study of the color of your eye with lesions and markings. And it's, uh, you take pictures of the eye and basically where there's weakness, you can, uh, it all goes to organ health. And so I, it's, it's a marker. It's a biologic marker. Yes. Yes, yes it is. And I had a hysterectomy during that time. I was 35 years old. And um, because of that, I got very good at iridology, trying to heal myself from uh, physical problems. Because once I had the hysterectomy, the alternative care that I got was uh, not what I was hoping for. And I started getting very large and very tired and very depressed. And lost her joy. Yes. <clears throat> And um, as we kept going, I, I realized even doing iridology and studying with the Chinese doctors, which that was all wonderful. I learned so much. Uh, we realized there was still something missing that we needed lab test. We, we kind of needed a, a measurement program, so to speak, of where numbers are optimal. And uh, Dr. Lewis about that time changed over and we started learning uh, how to read lab and uh, getting it optimal because as America gets sicker and fatter as a nation, those ranges on the lab get larger as well. Yeah. So it was our job to figure out where the numbers should be. And based on my health, we started getting me well. And um, today I can say that I'm, I'm not 35 anymore. It's been a few years since then, <laughs> but, I, but I, I actually feel better now than I did at that time. And um, it was all because of lab work and nutrition. Well, stop right there, Janet. Let me interrupt for a second because I know you've piqued my curiosity and I know everybody here would like to have a little bit more of an example, if you will, please, of what you would do. I'm imagining you in the bathroom looking in the mirror, perhaps even with a magnifying glass, 
<laughs> with one eye closed and the other eye open. That's what that's what my mental picture of you of you right now is. <laughs> and then if you did that, first of all, tell me whether that was a correct uh, assessment guess. And then if it was however you measured, what were some of the things you found with the color of your iris and what did you do about them? Um, with my eye, it was basically there was uh, a lot of outside, the outside color part of the pupil was very um, clear, I guess is a good way to say it. Is when you start having brain fog and that kind of thing, then the top of the eye gets very hazy looking, the, the color pupil part. The lack is of circulation. Lack, go, uh, is, is the whole pupil a uh, more transparent kind of color or is it is it just the edges around the pupil? What, what actually happens there? The, the edges around the color part of the eye. I got you. So it looks it looks like it's faded a little bit. Correct. And gotcha. as, your, as your brain is having more issue getting uh, the signal that it needs, you get more of a thickness there. And many times you can see uh, dementia, Alzheimer's type issues. You know, this is interesting because uh, I don't know uh, anything about iridology, to tell you the truth, but I was always, I became very interested in uh, the toxicology uh, associated that one could see in the retina with, um, I think it's called a Heisenberg, a retin, uh, it's a retinal machine by an ophthalmologist. And uh, they could actually see, because it's a direct representation of neurologic activity. Interesting. Uh, did, did, you go, did you go down that road? I didn't. We had a, 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 we had a special camera that would uh, take the picture and blow the iris of the eye up. Oh, you large. did? Okay. So you weren't, you weren't in the bathroom looking in the mirror then? Okay. No. No, I actually had a big camera. It's very hard to see on your own. Yeah. So, so that was one thing for you. Then did you take a look did you go over there and say Stephen I need to look at your eyes buddy what's going on there yeah I actually did that with a lot of people <laughs> that's how I got to China <laughs> I can, I can imagine. <laughs> she so was what happened with Stephen what'd you say Stephen I'm sorry uh, you know she was very very good but uh, then when we finally did our lab work you know in America sometimes we're hooked on well how do you feel and it's like feeling good is very important but that's not the entire picture so when we did our lab work you don't feel low vitamin D uh, which is incredibly important not just in brain health but uh, general health but I on my C reactive protein I was a six anything above a three is high risk of heart attack and stroke because you know of the inflammation that is what makes cholesterol stick cholesterol is not the bad guy it's uh, the inflammation. And, um, you know, there's just so much you can't feel. And we thought, well, lab work really cuts it right down to, oh, shows you things you don't feel or shows you things that could become a problem later. Mm -hmm. for, for, for me, the iridology was great. It, um, the herbs we were using at that time danced around a lot of the problems. And they changed a lot based on the eye pictures. Um, when we did the lab, I realized that I had a bad thyroid problem and that, that honed in for the specialty products, which is what we move toward the things that actually move lab values. Now let's talk a moment about that because I think a lot of people do not do the lab testing completely for the thyroid. And I know you guys are experts. Let's talk to our listeners a little bit about what you think a thorough thyroid lab evaluation consists of, please. Well, you know, most doctors do a TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone, which is actually the signal from the brain itself. Uh, and then they say, well, if it's in from 0.4 to a 4.5, and these reference ranges vary from lab to lab, but a 4 to a 4.5, these are ranges that don't represent normal, they represent common in America. So generally speaking, the TSH should be on the low side, which would indicate the thyroid's using it. And then we do the T4 and a T3 uptake. To me, the most valuable thyroid marker is free T3 or triiodothyronine. So that's the active hormone and you want it in optimal range, not in the broad range that covers, you know, almost everybody. So what's your T3 optimal? 
Oh, three to three and a half is pretty good. If it gets higher than that, it's usually really, really good. Um, I'd say three, two to three, five would be a real narrow range, but a very good range. Yeah, I thought that was very interesting. I mean, you guys also probably pay attention to ferritin. Yes. And you want to talk about some of those other ones as well? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned ferritin because most people don't run that, and it can be too low or too high. You can have the iron deficiency anemia, but sometimes that's precipitated by the inability to function or, or utilize B12 or folic acid. You know, we have this genetic SNP, the 5-MTHFR, uh, which is actually pretty common. Uh, th there's copper anemia, and there's so many different anemias, but those cover the majority of them. Um, and we and we run ferritin on our lab simply yes. because on a CBC, which is the basic panel, you know, you get at your doctor's office, uh, many times that is missed on someone that they are too low in iron or too high, because mm -hmm. if they're too low, they can uh, they can be dehydrated and it'll make their CBC look like it's fine. Yeah, you know, you can't just go by uh, hematocrit and hemoglobin. To me, that's way too general. So we do get specific. And there's many people that have too much stored iron or ferritin, and that, simply put, you know, thicker blood, uh, more inflammation, more oxidation, and that can contribute to uh, the CRP, C-reactive protein. And, and the Cleveland Clinic says the C-reactive protein is four times more indicative of a future heart attack and stroke than your cholesterol numbers. And I don't think cholesterol is really a big player. It's just a piece of the equation because if you get your cholesterol too low, artificially, you starve your brain. It sounds like Mark Hyman talking up there. <laughs> you know, I just got his book. I haven't read it yet, but I'm sure it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's now uh, in, in charge of the alternative medicine portion of uh, Cleveland Clinic and Oh, very oh, that's good. Awesome. <laughs> that's why I brought that up because he's not only at the uh, Institute of Functional Medicine, he's been there for years, but, and, uh, you know, he's just, he's just a heck of a good guy. He's a very, very interesting guy. Well, I'll read his book. I'll put it higher on the priority list now. So let's talk a little more about inflammation as it's related to thyroid. I don't want this to be, I mean, this is your, your time, guys. So I don't want to wear you out with something that I happen to be interested in. So, you know, but talk a little bit about thyroid just a little more before we switch to maybe your favorite subject. But that's the whole idea of inflammation and uh, immune system dysregulation is terribly interesting to me because I think it's so frequently, almost absolutely related to thyroid hypofunction. Well, you know, I have a tendency to try to boil it down, and then Janet has to keep me from going all over and chase rabbits all over the place. She kind of reels me in uh, to keep me more focused. But mm -hmm. inflammation and in, in GI tract is, I think, always or almost always part, the bigger part of the equation in any disease process. And I tell people, well, you know, we don't treat diseases, but we throw in the right nutrients so your body knows what to do, you know, with that. So, when you get a symptom or a disease process, that's just adaptive physiology. Your body's adapting to a you know, less than ideal situation. So inflammation, in my opinion, is mostly from uh, too many toxins in the environment and our genetically modified foods. Controversial subject, but I think GMO foods are not a good thing. And when they spray it over and over again with a Roundup, that's not a good thing. And, you know, we have people that contact us from Europe and other countries. And I'll say, well, for your allergies and your inflammation, you might need to quit eating this, 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 and this. And one guy in London says, stop right there, doc. He said, we don't eat that stuff because we don't grow it over here. And we, <laughs> we, we've kind of had a brief visit to Europe and different countries. And it's like... Uh, you didn't see the tiredness, the fatigue, the depression on the faces. You didn't see the same rate of obesity as we have here in America. So I think inflammation's always the key. Mm -hmm. So then do you have a, do you try to do this when you're saying low cost? I'm assuming that what you're trying to do is stay within helpful insurance parameters. Uh, or do you use, uh, labs like, uh, for example, Great Plains and some of the other uh, labs like that for your work? What, what, when you say low cost, what, what drives that part? 
Well, we use either Quest or LabCorp. You do? Yes. So that's great. I, I mean, I would like, this is, this is going to be interesting because what happens for me is I've tried that, but I, I'm, not as, I'm not as successful ordering those. And of course, I'd like to do it because it is low cost right. and the insurance is most of the time covered. Well, I kind of got fed up with the insurance companies years ago because, you know, you could see 50 people a day as a chiropractor and then the insurance companies wouldn't reimburse you. So I just tell people, this is the type of health care that you need to be responsible for yourself. And I don't get anybody complaining. People say, yes, please sign me up because I've already spent 10 grand doing something else without getting any results. So, you know, people are just paying cash and, you know, we don't have the burden of trying to justify it to the insurance companies mm -hmm. only to be denied. Which allows us to run whatever lab test we, we want then. So that, that, that's interesting because then what you're doing, how do you, what do the labs that you use getting away from thyroid a little bit, because we had a little bit of a discussion there, but what are the labs you run for what might be considered the comprehensive additional uh, parameters that would add to, I know it's going to be too much to talk about all in the, in the brief interview, but <laughs> give us a little hint about how you can actually target nutritional supplements based on what you're learning from LabCorp and Quest. Well, we do the, the usual CBC and uh, CMP. Uh, one of the things we're seeing is low white blood cell count or the neutrophils and lymphocytes. You know, sometimes they'll get what we call a viral pattern. Neutrophils get too low, lymphocytes get too high. And that is a trigger to look at uh, the possibility of gut health in a chronic virus. And you, if you question, you know, good listening to the patient, mm -hmm. they'll usually say, well, yeah, I had mono 10 years ago and or I just haven't felt the same sense. And you'll get that pattern on there. And then we look at monocytes. You know, it should ideally be low uh, for inflammatory response. Then your eosinophils, if they get high, then you have uh, gut dysregulation, poor digestion, leading to leaky gut, and the probability of overgrowth of candida and probably viruses. So we can't say there's a virus there, but we can say, uh, your eosinophils and basophils are too high, so <clears throat> we need to work on gut health and probiotics and learn to brew your own probiotics. And then on the CMP, you know, we look at globulin, uh, which is your immune response and your digestion, because most of your immune systems in your GI tract anyway. Which is gas, bloating, belching. Yeah. We're breaking that down easy. And uh, chloride is usually on the low end of what's considered normal, but it's not normal. That's just what America is. The lower the chloride, the less you can make hydrochloric acid because if you had higher hydrochloric acid, you'd be you know, killing these yeast fungus viruses. You'd be breaking down your food better and you would have less leaky gut and less overgrowth of candida. Uh, liver enzymes, you know, you have a broad range of about a zero to 44 on the AST, ALTs. And if it gets on a woman 25 and higher, there's a possibility of them beginning to go into fatty liver and it's 30 or higher on a man. Uh, liver. These people say, well, then, you know, I have 30, 35 on my liver enzymes. That says it's normal. I said, no, that's not normal. That's common. And you don't sleep good from 1 to 3 a.m. And they said, how did you know that? I said, that's the Chinese liver meridian. We learned that with traditional Chinese medicine. And I said, if you will take this and increase your detoxification pathways in your liver, you will sleep like a baby, get better sleep. You will detox your body. And there's a lot of detoxification pathways. And that's one of the reasons reasons we're not healthy as a nation. Overload of toxins, but underachieving when we're detoxifying our body. Very, very interesting. Now, before we go too far down the path on testing, and this is a little bit of going backwards, I wanted to ask you then, but you were on a nice roll there, and I didn't want to interrupt you, but <laughs> what, what, you, what are you doing with D3? I mean, you know, I know where I am with it, but I want to see what you guys say because I think that's one that's frequently missed. I mean, it's sort of like, you know, if you got 32, you're okay. Well, I try to get it 50 or higher. I think ideal is about 60 to 80. And if you have a good D3, and most supplements are not that good, and, and I hate to say it, but they rank differently. Some companies are definitely better than others. Uh, but if you get a good D, 
and you can't get it above 50, then we know you have a GI problem and, and improper absorption. I can take 15, 20,000 IUs a day, and I have never gotten my D3 higher than a 57. But I know I have GI issues. Part of it's genetic. Part of it's, you know, the environment. I think 50 and above. 50 is a minimum, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad to hear you say that because, uh, you know, listening to the D3 guys, I mean, they talk 60, somewhere between 50 and 60 is what they talk about all the time. Right. And I have so many people, I mean, we have people coming in with, a, with an eight uh, yep. and lower. I mean, you just, and then we do, uh, you know, I was listening because we do a lot of Great Plains and we then do like an oats and they come in with a 0, 0.00 vitamin C. You know, it's and it's amazing because you know they're just as you said a moment ago they're malabsorbing and they're just, you know, and they can look right. pretty good. They can look healthy. They can look, you know, a great smile on their face. They don't look depressed. They they feel depressed internally, but they fake it so well because they're so used to just pulling themselves together. You go down the street. Yeah, sometimes their willpower and, and the strength of their spirit can kind of overshadow what the body's doing. But sooner or later, you have to give that body a, a chance to heal and take the pressure off the mind and the, the spirit. Well, I'm going to take a moment here of a break, but I'm going to ask you this question. I want to get Janet to weigh in on this a little bit because this is so much fun, you know, talking to you, Stephen. I mean, we're getting, we're making some mileage on things that are really, in a way, if you do this at all, it winds up being common sense. It's not, it's not difficult. I mean, if the American Society, I may, may misquote this, and you can straighten me out if I do, but I think it's the American <laughs> Society for Endocrinology says that the TSH should be no higher than 3.0. You know, then, yeah. and that's, that's the Society for Endocrinology. And the, the bottom line is, People are not paying attention to the details. They're letting LabCorp are the, the parameters that are in the, instead of being an educated guy like yourself, you're saying, well, it's within the parameters. It's okay. Instead of, no, we need to get down and really read these things more carefully. So the question I'm going to ask Janet to switch it up a little bit is give us a little bit of an overview of some of the things you do with just some of the things that we have talked about, like vitamin D, like thyroid. What's your opinion about thyroid supplementation? Do you measure iodine? Those are some of the questions I'm going to ask when we come back in just a moment. Hang tight, folks. Well, folks, you know as well as I do that psychiatric treatment failure, especially after multiple medication trials and those very, very brief hospitalizations, may prove insufficient to deal at home with the complexity of troubled children and, and those adolescents from 6 to 17 years old. Improved care, those next mandatory steps, should include a more comprehensive approach to address those multiple levels of challenges, from family to peers to school, diagnostically from defiance to depression, on every level for families, including military families, internationally. The Barry Robinson Center's 32-acre open college-like campus in Norfolk, Virginia, provides safety and security and clean, comfortable living. How do we know? We refer folks over there all the time, strongly endorse what they're doing. So for further information and informed interview, connect at this page, barryrobinson.org forward slash core. Well, you folks already know that here at Core Brain Journal, we're on a mission to introduce you to resources that make significant contributions to the investigation of those predictable mind science applications. Our colleagues at DHA Lab Group provide a real difference with treatment options for people at every level, from first awareness of mind problems to those frustrating times when even well-informed treatment becomes surprisingly unpredictable. For my entire professional life, from psychoanalysis to brain scans, I've searched for, yes, improved predictability. The good news for all of us, from professionals to patients, remarkably effective research offers useful, cost-effective, organic options far beyond guesswork with psychiatric medications alone. DHA lab tests measure unbalanced biomedical details through easily available testing, now available globally for a variety of molecular answers from, for example, methylation, copper, and cryptopyrrole challenges. 
Check in for more details at dhalab.com core. That's dhalab.com forward slash core. Okay, gang, I know that you're out there running for your laboratory studies. You're in a car, however. You'll have to get them when you get home and replay this this piece because you want to look at the lab studies. You know what's amazing to me, and, and Stephen, I know you guys know this, but I think it's, it's, it's amazing that people don't get their lab studies and keep them keep a personal medical record so they can see where it was and where it went. That's a whole, whole nother subject. But right. back to the question I was going to ask, and honestly, it could be Janet. It could be you, Stephen. It doesn't matter who. I just thought I'd give Janet a little uh, platform here. Where do you start when you're starting to think about nutrition? Let's just take uh, vitamin D, for example, since we ended with that, and talk about supplementation with vitamin D. Then how do you actually treat the whole business of that T3, T4, that kind of thing. Let's talk just about those because we've talked about them already and we have a little foundation laid. Yeah, um, you know, Dr. Lewis can probably explain the thyroid to you a little bit better, but, you know, when I'm, when I'm speaking to someone, my first uh, inclination with them is uh, asking them, a lot of them are overweight. You know, that's one of the big things we see is they're, they're very overweight. And when they come in, they say, you know, I'm taking – all these supplements and uh, the lab does show you whether or not they're working. Uh, there's so many people that take vitamin D just like you said, and it's, it, it's doing little to nothing in their bloodstream because it's the wrong form or it's not in the, in it at all, which we've seen both ways. Um, so when we treat someone, we use pharmaceutical grade nutrition, things that are sold to doctors only to start with. But, uh, we can then use them on our patients the way we see fit, but we know without a doubt that it, what's in that vitamin is in it and it actually moves the lab. But, you know, my, my favorite thing is to ask somebody how many bowel movements a day are they having because that's a big one for digestion. That's not looking at a lab uh, because so many people think that going to the bathroom one time a day or one time every other day or every three days is normal. When you talk about gut health and inflammation, I ask people, if, how many meals a day are you eating? Most of them are eating two to three meals a day. Well, then my next question is, how many bowel movements a day are you having? And then they tell me one or every other day. So I tell them, if you have three trains that go through a tunnel, how many would you expect to see come out on the other side? <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's something to think about. And if they're not having those trains come through the tunnel, where have they gone? Janet in psychiatry, you're just asking my favorite question. I tell everybody, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pardon me, you didn't know this about me. But that whole mouth to the south thing is, is really, I get so much mileage out. I'm, I'm going to tell you, uh, and I got, I got a handout from the Mayo Clinic on the transit time that I give people because I'm a board certified psychiatrist and I'm asking the poop question. <laughs> we ask everybody that comes in, it's an absolute mandatory. And I tell them, I'm going to now ask you my favorite question. Because mm -hmm. I said last time I checked, the mind was connected to the body. And we, we, we hit the sores in the mouth, we hit the stomach, and then we hit number two. And, and that happens to be a really big one. And uh, there's a little bit of a controversy. One of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Uh, Russell Jaffe thinks it should be 18 to 24 hours. A Mayo Clinic thinks it should be 12 to 24 hours, but we measure it with a very sophisticated, expensive tool that you guys are probably using as well. A 69 cent can of corn works really. <laughs> I was going to say okra. <laughs> yeah. And I, I haven't used okra. That sounds a little sophisticated for my cloud. <laughs> well, we're from the South. You know, we get a little of the Cajun in there. And, you know, they always put okra in their gumbo. <laughs> where, where are you guys? Are you in Louisiana? Uh, East Texas. We're closer to Shreveport than we are Dallas. But Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's very refreshing to hear a psychiatrist talk about gut health because that's where the neurotransmitters come from. And, you know, Jen and I just did a podcast, and I'm, I name them some really strange things, like some of your best friends are bacteria was the last one we did about probiotics and how the probiotics can be translated into better 
mental health, you know, like some of the things that uh, I think it's the bifobacterium infetus increases serotonin levels, you know, and uh, one of the lactobacillus raminos, raminosis, uh actually alter GABA receptors. And so good bacteria, good bacteria. And, you know, one of my favorite books is by Dr. Gershorn about the gut being the second brain. So you yes. have to have gut health before you can have good mental health. That's so true. I, I love that book myself. I read it years ago. And, mm -hmm. and then I ran into Russell Jaffe with Perk and went to a meeting up in uh, D.C. with him and, and started talking more with the, the whole business of transit time and then realized that Burkett, Dr. Burkett, Burkett's lymphoma was talking about transit time when he was in Africa. It's, it's not a new subject at all. But it's new to people that haven't heard it because so many people will say, well, I've been doing that all my life. So they think that's normal. And that doesn't make it normal just because you've not experienced it correctly. So let's take a minute just to say that difference on the D level. There's a pharmaceutical grade D that's a D2. And the one you guys are recommending, I'm sure, is a D3. But you may even have a specific brand you recommend, which would be interesting. Yeah, there's a couple of different brands, but and we have straight D5000, we have D1000 too, but uh, we like the one that has enough of the K in it, you know, the MK7. Absolutely. Let's talk about that. That's a totally interesting subject. Because, <laughs> I mean, now we're, just, we're going to get a little on the edge, listeners, but we have somebody who knows what they're talking about. Let's talk about that. Let's talk a little bit about K2 and see what's going on. Well, you probably know a lot more about it than I do. I know enough to give it to people, especially before they go into osteopenia and osteoporosis. And, you know, some things are too simplified. And they say, well, I'm on Coumadin. I, you know, I shouldn't be taking K. Well, you got to know the difference between K1 and K2. You know, one helps you clot. The other one's okay. Uh, so, you know, you want to make sure you're going to somebody that knows a lot about it. We've never had a problem with people that are on blood thinners, but um, <clears throat> as far as osteoporosis, most people are not even told that they need other things like calcium hydroxyapatite. They need things like boron. Mm -hmm. How many people tell you about boron or horsetail rush? And we even have the bone morphogenic protein that we sell. And people say, Oh, that's a little bit expensive for a supplement. I said, so is a hip replacement. So, you know, <laughs> let's get it in there. You know, I try to make it fun and, and, yeah. and people say, but it's in these ranges. And, you know, you know, I'm East Texas. I said, well, it, these ranges cover all the strange people in Walmart that we make fun of on the Internet, too. So don't think common is normal. But, yeah, I think K is probably just as important as D. It just hasn't gotten the press. That's so true. And talking about cardiovascular health itself and atheroma formation. I mean, think of how many people have cardiology issues or, you know, cardiac issues, not cardiology issues, the study of the heart, but the cardiac issues with uh, post, post MI mm -hmm. and don't have any K in them whatsoever. I don't, I don't measure K. Do you guys measure K? No, we don't get that specific. Um, we just assume you need it. Uh, yeah. There's just so much that when we, we do the lab, we didn't get into all the extra things. We do cortisol to, to measure your stress levels. We do the ferritin. We do the hemoglobin A1C, your, your 90 to 120 day blood sugar. I, I don't look at glucose that much because it's so variable, but the A1C will really reveal. And then when you look at insulin, even if they have a good A1C, and their insulin, the range is about a 2 to a 19.6. Well, hey, if you get to a 10, you've got a problem. You're going into insulin resistance and you know, uh, metabolic syndrome, which is going to lead to diabetes. And, and anytime you get that metabolic syndrome and toward diabetes, you're greatly increasing your risk of neurodegenerative diseases. And I, I think that studies out of the Journal of Neurology. Uh, I can't keep them all in my head, but... You can start anywhere. Just start where it's most obvious. And if you put in the right nutrients, your body knows what to do with it. Well, our food's been nutrient depleted for probably 100 years. So true. 
You know, do, now, do you guys do hair testing to determine trace elements, or how do you do the trace element piece? I've done that a little bit, but and, and again, if a patient requests it, I will do that. But my point is that we are so toxic as a nation, instead of testing for many, many hundreds and thousands of dollars, I tell people, well, I like to test and be specific, but I'd rather treat more than I test. And so if you start putting in the good minerals like the Trax and Albion minerals, the more absorbable minerals that are chelated mm -hmm. correctly, then that's going to begin to displace. And we, that's why we watch the liver enzymes. You know, we have uh, different uh, liver detox, and that's very, very important, uh, which the liver's incredibly important in detoxifying uh, estrogens or the estrogen mimicking compounds, which are your plastics, your pesticides, your fire retardants you get out of your pillows. and uh, Which is your bad estrogens are your, your other part of your thyroid panel that we run. Yeah, we, you know, when we run, say, the hormones on a female, it's uh, estradiol, progesterone, DHEA, and testosterone. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the xenoestrogens or estrogen mimickers uh that has a lot to do with you know why men are having lower and lower testosterone yeah absolutely now uh, janet said something aside you heard her but i i know our audience didn't hear her. could could you say that what you just said again janet with the thyroid when we run the five parts of the thyroid there's one on there called t3 uptake that we yeah. we like to run that number needs to be a 30 or above and any time it starts dropping below a 30, that's the bad estrogens that Dr. Lewis is talking about. They're beginning to um, take over the body. And on a woman, they'll notice that they are thicker through their back, like their shirts don't fit like they used to. Not the front, but the back. <laughs> uh, their hips are <coughs> bigger than they uh, were. Estrogen dominant right? fat. Because yeah, the they body. Get that that pear shaped figure. <laughs> That's right. The body's storing that in places that it thinks it's safe. So uh, we use things like diendol methane that helps go back in there and gobble up those bad estrogens and get a woman's shape back to the way it was when they were younger. Plus, it's a huge cancer prevention uh, type nutritional product. So with this care that you're using, and we only have a couple minutes left here, but I want to ask you just a couple more questions. Uh, do you tend to be so specific in what you're doing that you stay away from multivitamins or do you do a multivitamin or how do you actually approach that whole multivitamin controversy? I think it's very, very important to do a multivitamin. And again, there's some really bad ones out there depending on the form. Uh, the one we use is uh, ranks a 4.5 on a five-star system out of there's this one book that has ranked many, many, many of them. And, and again, it's, it's the more activated, like the P5P and the quatrifolate, which is the 5-MTHF, and the B12, the good one, that's the methylcobalamin, not the cyanocobalamin. But I think a multivitamin, I think you're crazy if you're not taking it. And I think you have to have the omega-3s. And the easiest way to get omega-3s is good, clean fish oil. And again, they're not all created equal. Mm -hmm. Some of them are much more absorbable and much cleaner. <clears throat> we can usually tell if that works just by what happens to your triglycerides and HDLs when that happens. But, uh, you, you know, if you're taking them, um, and we do have a test that can check your omega-3s, whether it's working or not. And I've uh, had a lot of people very disappointed in their omegas when we did that test. But, uh, um, yeah, I think a multivitamin, I think a multivitamin, uh, Multivitamins probably the way to start. Uh, the omegas, uh, vitamin D, I think is critical. I think digestive enzymes are absolutely critical for about nine out of ten people. And probiotics, probiotics, and more probiotics because yeah, you absolutely. Have so now let me ask you the name of that book because you got my curi curiosity up, but we kind of blew past it. I don't want to put you on the spot. Do you oh, yeah. have? Yeah, you have it right at your fingertips. So he's showing it to me, folks, right now. And they can't uh, hear that. <laughs> Comparative Guide to Nutritional Supplements Professional Edition by Lyle McWilliam. It's an eye-opener. And it just tests multivitamins. But if you see that, oh, this 
particular company's multivitamin ranks a 1.5. I think it's fair to say that the rest of their supplements are kind of lower also. Yeah. You know, it's an they're assumption. They're not doing quality control. Right. Comparative Guide to Nutritional Supplements. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'll, I'll put that in the show notes for folks. So listen, guys, we're winding up. This went by exceedingly fast. I mean, you know, the issue here is I think we've done is teased it a little bit. I mean, the person really has to get down and get into it to really uh, take it take it into the uh, level of really being a positive force. But I think you've said so much that's been so helpful in terms of, hey, guys, let's not sit back and, and think we're doing something when we're really not doing something. Let's get more precise about it. Precision is one of my favorite words because if we're going to measure, then we're going to be more precise. And then if we know what we're measuring, and as Janice said, if we know how we're being careful with what we're giving a person, then the whole level of scientific validity and inquiry and, and treatment is, is more appropriate for that person coming in. They're, they're not wasting their money. Correct. That's exactly right. They they need to be more informed, which amazing, amazingly, it seems like the younger generation is what much more informed because they're all scared to death of having outcomes like they see their parents. Oh yeah. Well, Stephen and Janet Lewis, give us a little bit of a URL place where we can go get in contact with you, and I'll put that in the show notes as well, please. Uh, GreenWisdomHealth.com. That was the one. Okay, they're there. They're up and running at greenwisdomhealth.com. Thank you so much for taking the time. Very interesting. And I think it's really interesting also that you folks aren't regular MDs. You're looking at alternative ways of doing it in a constructive way. Hey, if it is working, that's fine. If it isn't working, let's take it further with people who can take it further. And you guys are a pair that are willing to do that. And we really appreciate you making the effort. For all the people who are listening here, thank you so much. Well, thank you for having us. It was a pleasure. All right. You guys have a great day. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Core Brain Journal. We're working every day behind the scenes to bring you reports that connect research benches with those street trenches. Here we share the complexity of mind science because, as you know, details really do matter. One of the most pervasive, misunderstood challenges is how commonplace medications, like those written for ADHD, are used so regularly without clear guidelines. If you think you'd like more specifics, take a minute to download my two-page PDF packed with video links and references on the absolute essentials of how to start ADHD medications. They're easily available at corebrainjournal.com forward slash start. Thanks for listening. Do connect and stay tuned. Together we can make a difference.